Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel, it's Son of a Gun Gourmet, and I'm very excited to bring you today's video because I took one of my favorite meats and I cooked it in a way that I've never tried before and it turned out amazing. So in this one, I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful sous vide short rib. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's start cooking. Start by getting your sous vide ready. We're going to want it at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for this. And while that's heating up, we can get the short rib ready. And because this was more of an experiment for me, I wanted to try this versus a braised short rib. So I split the cut in half, and that piece will be in my next video, where I'll show you how I normally cook a short rib along with the pros and cons of each and which one I ultimately prefer. One thing that's important with all cuts of meat is making sure that you get rid of any silver skin that you can, because no matter what cooking method you use, it's never gonna break down and could make an otherwise perfectly prepared protein borderline inedible. I could see on this side of the short rib that there was a layer of silver skin underneath the fat cap. This fat is fine to remove, the cut has more than enough marbling to make up for it. And after it's been cleaned, it's time to season it. And for the seasoning, I'm just gonna hit it all around with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. I like to keep the seasoning super simple. This cut is already packed with flavor, and since we're going to be cooking it for such a long period of time, those flavors will intensify, so you don't want to put anything overwhelming. That's why you don't want all that garlic powder that I accidentally just spilt onto there. Once it's all seasoned up, it's time to put it into a vacuum sealed bag and get it into the sous vide. Make sure it's properly sealed and there are no holes. If it starts filling with air again, you'll need to either redo the seal or change out the bag. We're gonna let these go for a full 48 hours. In about an hour before these are done, we can get everything else ready. For the sauce, add one cup of red wine to three cups of beef stock, one tablespoon of black peppercorn, one teaspoon of whole cloves, two teaspoons of juniper berries, three bay leaves, half a bunch of thyme, and the leaves of one sprig of rosemary. Bring the saucepan to high heat, let it come to a boil, then drop it down to a simmer and let it reduce down. One thing that's not essential but is ideal for this sauce is having homemade beef stock. Because homemade beef stock will thicken up beautifully as it reduces down and give you a great demi-glace as the end product. You could still do it with a zero sodium store-bought stock. You'll just most likely need to add a thickener. To accompany the short ribs, I'm gonna make a sweet potato puree. Start by peeling and rough chopping one large sweet potato. If I were to guess, I'd say that this one weighs about 10 ounces. I make my sweet potato puree very similarly to how I make parsnip or any other root vegetable puree. I simmer it in either 35% cream or whole milk, just enough to cover the vegetables with a few cloves of garlic and a pinch of salt. I'll leave a link to a video where I make parsnip puree with 35% cream in the description down below. The other side is going to be pan-seared king oyster mushrooms because mushrooms go so well with beef. And king oysters are a nice meaty mushroom with a great texture that could hold up to a hard sear. You might have quite a few things going on on the stove right now, so keep a close eye to make sure nothing boils over or over reduces. Of course, at any time, if you over-reduce your beef sauce, as long as you haven't burned it, all you have to do is add a bit of water to thin it out. As a garnish, I went with gremolata. The freshness from the parsley mixed with the spice from fresh garlic and that hit of lemon will really cut through all the richness in this dish and amplify the flavors. And it's really easy to make. All you need is one cup of loosely packed parsley leaves, one clove of minced garlic, and the zest of one lemon. Chop them all together until they're well combined. This is a garnish that I typically use for a lot of heavy meat dishes. It goes great on top of something like an asabuco or a braised lamb shank. Because when you're trying to eat something that's that rich, either the sauce or the fat can coat your palate and make it hard to actually taste all the flavors without something fresh, sharp, or acidic to balance it out. Now that our short rib is cooked for two full days, I'm excited to see what it looks like. Make sure to save all the drippings from the bag. That's just extra flavor that you could add to your sauce and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with it. After pulling the short rib out of the bag, I could feel that it's insanely tender. I could also see that it hasn't shrunk nearly as much as it would've if I braised it. 
and I'm hoping that because I cooked it at 140, it looks like a perfect medium steak on the inside. Now that my sauce has been cooking for about an hour and is reduced down to the point that I'd like it, I'm going to strain out all the herbs and spices and then put it back on the heat with the drippings added to it and reduce it back down. This is why it's very important that your beef stock doesn't have any added salt. With all this reduction, it would make it super salty. Sauces like this one that get their flavor and body purely from reduction are a painstaking process, but they're incredibly delicious and rewarding to make. They also won't seem nearly as tedious if you can make a large batch of beef stock and then reduce it down to a heavy concentration, almost like a homemade bouillon. I like to reduce 10 liters down to one. This gives me a ton of beef stock that's easy to store. Once the sweet potatoes have simmered until they're tender, it's time to take them and the garlic off the heat and strain them out of the milk. But don't just pour it right into the sink, you are gonna need some of that for the next step. Load all the sweet potato and garlic into your blender. Add about a third cup of diced butter and start blending. And slowly pour in some of the hot milk, just enough to get things going. Be conservative when adding it, you don't want it to get too thin. Once it has a silky smooth consistency, keep it hot and leave it off to the side. Adjust the seasoning if needed. I want to sear the short rib to get a really nice crust on it, so in order to do that I have to pat it dry. If you don't, you won't be able to get a good sear and the oil will start popping at you and it might even get you hurt. Now slicing into this short rib was the moment I was waiting for and I was not disappointed. Seeing a short rib at a perfect medium that's this tender is just wild to me. And it makes the long wait totally worth it. All I'm hoping for now is that it tastes as good as it looks. Add your oil to a hot pan on medium high. I'm just really making sure that that oil is at a perfect temperature because you're not going to have it in the pan for very long and you want to get a good sear on it. Add both short ribs to the pan, but only if it's big enough, you really don't want to overcrowd it. And if you feel like the temperature is dropping too much, crank up the heat. I think for the whole searing process that I had these short ribs in the pan for about two minutes. I just want to stress that it wasn't a very long time at all, so you really want to make sure that that heat is high enough to get you a good sear. And what better way to finish off these short ribs than with a nice butter baste. It's funny because I was actually uncertain of whether or not I should even do this because I've never finished a short rib by searing it, but in the end I was really happy that I did it. Once I was finished with searing, I put the ribs on a rack to rest for about 10 minutes while I finished everything else up, and resisted the urge to eat them. Drain the fat out of the pan that you just used and add some fresh oil to it to sear the king oyster mushrooms. As with searing everything, make sure that the pan and oil are nice and hot. Give the mushrooms a nice sear on each side for about a minute. Immediately after you flip all the mushrooms, season them with salt and pepper and add a knob of butter. Whenever you're searing mushrooms, always finish them off with butter. They just go so well together. Place the mushrooms onto a paper towel to absorb any excess fat. To finish the sauce, whisk in a couple knobs of butter off heat. This will give your sauce a great shine and this technique is used to finish off many sauces. Take the short rib off the bone and slice it. Be careful, I was using a very sharp knife to do this and it was still tricky. Now all that's left is getting everything on the plate. I have to say that overall I was very impressed by the results of the sous vide. The short rib came out so juicy and so tender it's hard to say whether or not a braise can compete. But I guess you'll have to tune in next episode to see which one I ultimately think is better. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and keep on cooking.